Good morning and welcome to today's edition of Tuesday Talk. I'm your host, Natalie Hutchins. Please remember that any of our Tuesday talks that you watch, you go into tinyurl.com forward slash Tuesday sign in, where you will find the required sign in for your technical assistance videos. You will notice that I've actually marked the Tuesday talk diversity and inclusion professional development and it is now available on our YouTube channel. Earlier this year, we expressed the desire to increase our building capacity for involvement, staff training, or professional development, as we refer to it here in Cobb County. There are three different levels of building capacity, staff training, or parent involvement. In your handbook, you can find this information on page 45. Last year, we began to implement the Innovative Processes module. And this year, we are working towards each school being innovative. With that being said, I would like to remind you that building Parent capacity should be scheduled regularly, and the suggestion from the state is at least quarterly. Therefore, each school should have at least four building parent capacity staff trainings each year. We do understand, however, that this information was not communicated in school to schools before the annual schedule was set. Each school provided the meets compliance professional development training before the September 30th deadline. For those schools who would wish to continue to work towards the innovative implementation are encouraged to provide training to their staff quarterly. So the purpose of us meeting today is to have to get more information on an optional training for your school. If you are not able to provide training quarterly, please reach out to our office individually and we'll be more than happy to help your school come up with an additional training option, something supplemental, or work with you on something that will fit your needs. Again, for reference on Building the Capacity for Involvement Staff Development, please see the innovative model on page 45 of your handbook. Okay, so we're gonna jump right in. When you access your Google Drive, you have the Engage One Help Desk Share folder. In the Engage One Help Desk Share folder, um, you will find all of your um, parent capacity documents, each one of the components that we are required to um, provide, there is a folder for us to use. This time around, you'll notice that there are two professional development folders. This is the original professional development that it meets the requirements for the state. Everyone has turned theirs in, so thank you for m so much for meeting the state requirements. And secondly, here is the optional. Um, staff development and you'll notice that this actually is professional development January 2016. We will be sending out the February checklist um, stickers shortly to you in the mail and you will notice that the optional professional development um, will be on your February checklist for those of you who wish to move forward towards the innovative model. So let's go ahead and double click in here. Um, and we'll go through the pieces that you have. You will notice that each document has a duplicate document and I'll explain that to you. If the document has a W that looks similar to your word, that is the original blank template. Then you will notice there's a little notebook sheet of paper. In that document, 
that is the document that our office has actually edited for you. So all you have to do is go in there and stick your school name and the date. So the first piece I'd like to discuss is the workshop summary form. So I'm going to double click that. You'll notice the date has been updated. It says 2015-2016. There must be a two-digit day, two-digit year, and four-digit month. So all you'll need is to fill out the presenter's name. That is more than likely going to be the parent facilitator and possibly the academic coach. The time that you held the meeting and the audience, and of course this will be your staff. You have the option of doing what's best for your school. So if you're meeting in grade levels, you can put the grade level team name here. If you're meeting at um, your staff uh, meeting after school, you may put that there. You may be meeting with um, your transportation staff members or your cafeteria staff members. Um, you can put whoever your audience is there. We've already completed shell number three for you, and I've put in the excerpt for the diversity and inclusion promoting cultural competency module three with an explanation. And then you'll notice that in uh, requested activities, because we are really emphasizing our activities plans this year since we all have um, budgets, that once you receive receive the surveys back from your staff member, I would suggest that you list their suggestions here from the survey before printing and sending this um, to me or to our office. Uh, the word parents has been changed to staff on the staff evaluations. And here are the items that are saying that we are required by the state to include. Your workshop summary form is what we're discussing now. I, we have an agenda or an outline, so you can use that. Sign-in sheets are not in this folder, but every school has their own sign-in sheets. Materials, there are PowerPoints that are um, and a handout that are also attached to this folder um, and any other document that you have. So now we're going to move to the staff evaluation form and ensure that your administrator signs this. And it's a good opportunity to have the staff survey um, information here when you actually meet with your administrator because they really enjoy hearing what the staff would like to um, implement or possibly beef up in your schools so this is a good opportunity for you to meet and speak with them and we will not need this back until the end of February okay when you go back to the professional development folder again you're going to see two documents that are very similar, the Word document for the staff survey, and you're also going to see the little notebook paper staff survey. Uh, we're going to double click the staff survey. Again, you will notice that the title is um, already typed in for you, and it's the annual Title I Staff Professional Development on Parent Involvement. We're going to leave this title the same. The reason we say annual is because annual is ongoing at the minimum requirement. Um, you've met that um, earlier in the fall. And those of you that are working towards the innovative model, you're having ongoing um, Title I professional development. And that's what that is. This will be build parent capacity as our purpose. Again, two-digit day, two-digit month, four-digit year, your school name. And this is very self-explanatory. The teachers will circle their position, um, what they enjoyed about the sessions, what they learned, what they will do next. I did have someone to ask if they could make this staff survey electronic. Absolutely, you may. Um, if you do, we'd love for you to share that with us. When you go back to your folder, um, you will notice that the cultural competency um, folder is here. This is the folder that I took right down from the state. So we're going to double click that. And uh, you will notice again that there is an outline. And this is a suggested outline based on some of the feedback that I received. Um, when we met in November 
you will notice that this outline has a lot of blue on it. These are the um, kind of your feedback, what I've heard from our staff members, what you would like to do utilizing the Elijah Miles videos. And this is the template directly from the state. Again, this is optional. Um, you are feel free to make this fit the needs of your local school and your time frame. I want to tell you that there are a few documents here that you are going to need to have opened up. There is the diversity and inclusion PowerPoint here. These are the exact same PowerPoint. I did not make any changes. This just opens up a little bit better on my computer. And then there's a document referred to putting it into practice, which you will see. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two documents open today. We're going to discuss the outline, and we're also going to discuss the PowerPoint and kind of give you an example of how you could present this um, if you're able to do so. So first, let's go over to the actual outline. I'm going to read that to you, and then we're going to go back to the PowerPoint and see how that works together. Okay, so the state has provided several modules for um, staff development. They are very good uh, modules, and I appreciate um, getting so much feedback from everyone as far as how they would like to see um, or how they would like to um, contribute to some of those state models. Diversity Inclusion Promoting Cultural Competency Module. This is an outline. We like to allot for 20 to 30 minutes to complete the workshop. Um, we want to be mindful of everyone's time. Many of our teachers will be during their planning periods, and if they only have 45 or 50 minutes, we want to ensure that people have time to use the restroom, get their students where they need to be, and still have a meaningful workshop time. So we really want to try to tweak this down to 20 or 30 minutes. And there's a couple of different options here for your staff, depending on how you're going to have your staff set up and the environment that you're in. So the first thing I want to say is please, please be prepared to show the PowerPoint and have your handouts ready and all the video clips. I would sincerely suggest that you have all of these items on separate tabs at the top of your laptop or have them printed out and also to put the staff members into groups. Um, if you um, have everything already ready on your laptop, then you can just move back and forth between the items that you'll need and that will help to speed things up. Two minutes. Introduce your name and your title, uh, the title of the workshop, which you have on the workshop summary, and state the purpose of the professional development. When we watched Elijah Miles together, um, he was a great kid and had lots of parents and teachers and community people that knew he was a great kid and they knew he would grow up and do good things. But people kept telling him, Elijah, you're going to grow up and do great things and you're going to move out of Baltimore and be a better person. And that really kind of hurt him because he said, why couldn't he be a better person in Baltimore? And he really just made it his life mission to be the best person he could be, but be the best person in Baltimore. He said if he wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a sanitation worker, he was going to be the best sanitation worker that he could be. And he was going to stay in Baltimore and help to build the community up instead of leaving the community. And I feel like um, as a parent facilitator by heart and someone who loves children and loves community, that that is Cobb's voice. We are always consistent about building better students here in Cobb, building better leaders here in Cobb, building better families here in Cobb. You know, we want to make Cobb the best place on earth. And we do that by investing in our students um, each day and reminding them that they can be the best they can be here in Cobb and wherever they want to be. Be the best student here in Georgia, in these United States, or, you know, in another country. But to support them in whatever their dreams and goals are going to be as they grow up. And so we would like to utilize this opportunity to talk to staff members and allow them to have productive, good conversation about ways that as teachers and staff members, we can influence our community to be a better community. Um, for those of you who um, don't want to um, 
talk a lot because we have some people um, that are very, very vocal parent facilitators who are very comfortable standing up in front of an audience. And we have some parent Here is where I suggested that um, the parent facilitators that um, you could use the Elijah Miles video clip. The, this video is the three minute long clip that we watched during our meeting. So you simply um, click here and the video link will open. And I would also suggest that you have your staff to sit in small groups of less than 10 people. If you have it in your media center, there are probably tables in there where you have a staff meetings um, your staff members can be sitting in groups or if you're in their planning or in a classroom, something like that. I would just, there's a couple of activities and discussions that we'll have during the, that are suggested during the training. So groups would be the best possible option. And so basically the template is going to follow the PowerPoint. Um, there's a couple of different pieces uh, to the PowerPoint and there's an outline for you. And you will notice on the PowerPoint, you actually... Um, are able to go right through, go right through. So if you want to print the PowerPoint out so that you'll have the notes, that is also um, will be helpful. So I have wrote quickly, this is on the PowerPoint. So you can't see what I'm going to do, but I'm actually just going to go back to the, um, the professional development folder and I'm going to click that PowerPoint. All right, so here's the PowerPoint, diversity and inclusion. Training three for teachers. What is di why is diversity inclusion important? And right here below, you can actually see that the state has lots of information here um, for you. So take some time and read this before you actually present. I would not suggest reading all of this, but I would suggest reading it before you actually um, deliver the professional development so that you'll have a better understanding of um, what's being articulated or what's the purpose. And why is diversity and inclusion important? Reaching diverse parents presents interesting challenges for all of us. All cultures practice traditions that support and value their children and prepare them for living in society. And to successfully engage parents, it is important to become aware and respect those values, beliefs, customs, and parenting styles. Next, why is diversity inclusion important? Here they give you several examples of the positive and negatives for diversity inclusion. This is something that we do here in Cobb very, uh, very well. We have lots of different um, uh, native speakers of different languages and different cultures and different backgrounds. Um, so that's something that we work, you know, here in Cobb, we're all very, very diverse. So we're fortunate to be a diverse community. And then the next slide is what is cultural competence? Um, and I liked really what they said about cultural competence as far as respecting the difference in the gifts that each person has and accepting the difference in others um, to achieve cultural competence. So I'm going to go back to the outline. And it says, why is it important? Uh, seven minutes. So this is not um, a long amount of time. And those are the slides that we're going through right now. And uh, the suggestion would be when you get to this slide, the cultural competence continuum, um, Ignorance is people that are not aware at all that there are different cultures and different people. And we're going to have people in our building that are just not aware of different cultures. They might be new to Cobb. They might be new to your school. They might be new to this area. Um, everybody comes from different backgrounds and different upbringings. Then we're going to have people that are aware. They understand that our um, families are different, that our families might face certain socioeconomic challenges. Um, and they just are simply aware, but they aren't doing anything to make the connection on a level where the parents can understand. And then we'll have staff members who are sensitive. We'll have staff members who are very sensitive to the fact that 
um, some of our students really struggle with a variety of um, situations at home and we'll have but they still um, ensure that the students are getting their learning taken care of and we have some staff members who are so sensitive that they're unable to really make that connection because they're afraid or maybe don't know what to do in certain situations but once a person um, becomes aware of the different challenges and opportunities with our students and they have a level of sensitivity, we move up towards the continuum of understanding. And by understanding, we understand that our um, stu that some of our students are different, that some of our students are of different cultures, that um, some of our students uh, maybe live in tougher situations than others. But we all believe that every single one of our children can learn and that learning is an equal opportunity for everyone. And as educators, we dig deep to ensure that we meet the student where they are and that we provide learning for them in a way that they understand. And we make everyday learning relevant for them so that they can understand their curriculum. And then we move to competence. We have a, a, a school that everyone is sensitive and understanding and that everyone um, has that expectation that we engage our families so that our students who are our primary focus that's why each one of us comes to work every day gets what they need during that school day and beyond the school day to ensure that they're going to grow up to be the most productive um, engaged citizen here in Cobb County so the suggestion here would be to invite people to think about where they are on the continuum. Um, people might not feel comfortable sharing this information out, but maybe you could pause here and give them a couple of minutes of think time. Again, the state has provided lots of notes about ages and income and where people live. So take some time and really read over this um, before you present this slide. I would not necessarily ask people to share out their opinions of um, but two questions here you could pose is, where are you as an individual and where are you as a school? And maybe make a personal goal about where you want to go next. Here's a true false quiz. <clears throat> true or false, everyone in society has a culture and is part of several subcultures. Of course, that's true. And is every family have its own unique culture? Of course, that's true. So that meets the requirement of the seven minutes. Now for 30 seconds, you're gonna read one PowerPoint that has the five keys. Here are the five keys of cultural competence as an individual, within your home, at your school, with families and in the community. And I wanna note that you'll see number one here, but I think the state actually has some, um, needs some adjustments here at the notes section um, of the page, but that's okay. And then you're gonna take 10 minutes and you're gonna explain each one of those um, keys. And again, um, <clears throat> Even though this says number one, this actually goes through each one of them. So the next slide is number one, which um, has the information on it for you. See how that says number two, but actually number one is individual. So when if you print this out, you can just make that adjustment. Um, the state probably put it that way so that you could know what was coming up next. Um, so we'll go with that. As an individual, Here's information here about being uh, respecting people individually. Here's another set of information about respecting people within their home. At the school level, and this really speaks to our parent activities plans. A uh, part of the survey that you're going to ask your parent, your staff members to uh, fill out, really speaks to this to the parent activities plan. What activities are you doing now that you want to continue? Now that you have a budget for this year and next year, and what are some things that they may want to add? Feel free to contact our office any any time and say you know Natalie these are some things that we were thinking about here in school what do you think about that um, I'm always available to you guys I'm definitely willing to set appointments and to meet with you so that we can support you here in our office of, 
um, with things that your school is interested in. Um, as schools, we have 45 schools and they all are very different and have different populations. And we wanna ensure that our office too respects the desires of the families and stakeholders in your school. Um, with families. And I love that it says it takes a village to raise a child, and it really does. Every single person that touches that student during the day should have a level of understanding, sensitivity, and competence when it comes to what those students um, may be going through uh, for the day. If a student is um, hungry and um, maybe they're uh, new to the country and they're just not sure of what to do in the cafeteria, having someone sit with them or having a, a student sit with them or a teacher sit with them and model for them. Um, I've had several students that from are from different countries that don't use the same utensils that we use. So if I needed to spend a week or two weeks or three weeks eating in the cafeteria with that student just to show them what a fork and a spoon is, um, that's quite okay because not every country uses a fork and a spoon. Those are things that um, help to increase the competence of the school about things that students need and talking to parents about that as well. Um, having a level of understanding and engagement with our parents so that our parents can feel comfortable in our school building. Um, I know things that you, um, lots of our staff members and schools do already as we hold cultural awareness nights and we have all these different activities where we're able to celebrate our parents individualities and come together as a community and that's a great way to build relationships with families when we have our science nights and our math nights and the parents are able to come and to be there having a good time with their students and learning how to support their students academic needs and showing them um, what school uh, looks like at different age bands um, in elementary, it's very different in K2 than it is in 35. Then when you move on to the middle school and the senior high school years, uh, parent involvement is going to look very different at those schools. So to really un have the teachers to be sensitive and to understand and be aware of the lifestyles of the parents. Maybe in high school, you don't see as many parents, but they still have students in elementary and middle school where they're, they've already spent time in the school when they're ninth grader was in kindergarten so they feel like they've kind of already done that job so we have to make things look differently for them in the high schools and in middle school if you're most of our parents have always been in a title one school so if your parents have been in a title one school since kindergarten now they're in seventh grade you might not see them as much so just be aware of what the parents needs are and how you can support the parents so the parents can support their students educations these are the kind of conversations that these um slides will um promote and in the community. Um, lots of you um, have been communicating with me about building partners in education. You guys are doing a fantastic um, job with that of getting people from the community into those buildings, speaking to the parents and students and the teachers and staff and that's amazing. You guys are doing a tremendous job in that. We're gonna go back to the slide and um, here's where our office did a lot of suggestions for the state template. There are two options here. Um, the next slide you're going to get to is a slide that says putting it into practice. And this is a role play sheet. On the role play sheet, there are three different um, activities. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And let's talk about the two options that you can have. And then we'll um, I'll show you the role play sheet. And option one. It's about eight to 10 minutes. What I would suggest you do is to print out each of those three scenarios and give each group all three scenarios and allow them a couple of minutes a piece to role play the scenarios and then share out after a certain amount of time. So if there's uh, three scenarios, possibly you wanna give them two minutes a scenario, then have a minute of share out and that would be um, about nine minutes where you could get all three of those done. So that's why I said it was pretty good to suggested to have the staff members in um, it, together that way. The other option would be to show the Elijah Miles TED Talk as a closing and to note that the Elijah Miles TED Talk um, is nine minutes and 30 seconds. So you will not have the opportunity to have 
um, each one of those scenarios, but just give each group one scenario. Um, and then they could talk about that one scenario and be done. Um, so let me show you the scenario. Okay, so when you go back to the professional development folder inside the cultural competency module three, um, you'll have the putting into practice um, scenarios. I did not make any changes whatsoever to the state scenarios. So we're just gonna double click these um, scenarios and I'll show you what they look like. And I'll also show you where they are on the PowerPoint. Okay, so putting it into practice, here are the scenarios. You could run these scenarios on colored cards or cardstock. You could have it all on one sheet. You could put it in an envelope and, you know, have it as a surprise. You know, make the training your own. Uh, one is a scenario as if the person was a teacher. Another scenario is if the person was a parent. And another scenario would be if the person was an administrator. It does not matter if you have teachers, um, transportation staff members, or your cafeteria staff members, maintenance. It doesn't matter who is in this training, um, if it's a grade level or um, just a variety of different staff members all together. Uh, they could all go through each of these three if you're going to do the shorter version of the 8 to 10 minutes, but if you're going to do the longer version of the 10 to 15 minutes, then the suggestion would be just to give um, the staff member one of these scenarios. And now I'll show you where that is in the PowerPoint. The next slide simply says practice makes perfect. Let's put it into practice and this is where you would pause for those discussion questions. Once you've had an opportunity to decide which one of these you want to do, you want to ensure that you close. Please tell the staff members that you appreciate their time and to let you know how you can move forward in supporting them in your school, school by filling out this survey. I put here, you can find an electronic copy of the survey here, and I put coming soon. If one of our um, staff members, if you guys want to create an electronic survey and share it with us, I'd be more than happy to create a link um, on the Google. If you know how to do that, you can. If you would like for me to do it and you have an opportunity, send it to me and I'll add it um, right here in the folder space. And then if you are able to meet with your administrative team or your principal, I would highly encourage you to share with them the input that you get anytime you have staff training or anytime you're meeting with the staff as well as parents so that they can have a, a, the best picture possible of what people are asking of your school um, so that you can use that activities plan to build the parent and contributions of both the staff as well as build the capacity of your parents. So I will go back to show you the survey, which is in the professional development folder. So please ensure that you can tweak this uh, professional development to the needs of your school, but we have to have the required SANE documentation and um, please have your staff members fill out the survey or the evaluation form and also send us back the um, the workshop summary and in the workshop summary we've already put our information here you'll just go back and um, hit some of those suggestions um, Again, don't forget to sign in anytime you watch any of the videos. The last few Tuesday talks are here. Um, I did say that they'll only stay on for a few weeks, so I will be taking the December and January documentation off um, in the next couple of weeks. I, we have the Kristen Kennedy um, on here. If you wanted to watch it again, sign in. Um, I've received most everyone's videos. We have just a couple of uh, staff members who have not recorded their resource room video. If you need help with that, the the video is still on our um, on our YouTube playlist. The videos will always always stay on the YouTube playlist until probably 
June or July once the school year is over and we'll start a new video series um, next fall but I don't want the list to get very long for the sign-in sheet and I'm hoping that you're watching these weekly and you're participating weekly that's the expectation um, so just remember to sign in and as always, if you need anything whatsoever, please reach out to our office utilizing the help desk. We are always here for you. Um, any questions that we may not have answered during our time together, I'm always available. Our staff members here are always available. We appreciate you and all that you do and working so very hard in the community. So as always, engage one. And our motto is to actually go out and um, engage our communities one family at a time, and I'll talk to you soon.